Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, I'd like to introduce Eb Carters. Um, Eb has worked in a number of university libraries. She has also worked in a wide variety of other library environments, including library vendors. Eb has been a cataloger for about 25 years and has been a member of the Australian Committee on Cataloging since 2002, served as ACOC Chair 2003 to 2011, and is currently the Australian representative on the RDA Steering Committee. She believes we should be sharing data more and adding value to records for all the library community to utilise. Her next big resource description adventure hopefully will be with linked data. Please welcome Eb. Oh, you poor sods, right this after lunch. Okay, um, when Megan talked to me about giving this presentation, I had no idea about the bib frame notification that came out on the 9th of May. I'd only, I had been on one of my hobby horses, I have been told I've got a whole herd of them, when I was talking to Megan regarding about something else, of course. It has now proved to be very apt. I read Ex Libris's announcement with extreme unhappiness. The statement that caused me most concern was, I quote, libraries will be able to enjoy the full functionality of the Ex Libris Alma Library Services platform with metadata in the MARC, Dublin Core, and bib frame formats, unquote. Most people will no doubt uh, here think, well, so what? This only affects catalogers. Well, I want to show you that it matters to everybody. And I have um, made this presentation a little bit shorter because I do want people to ask questions and talk and discuss. The views expressed are my own and no one else's. In no way do they represent those of my employer. All I would like to do today is start a conversation in the APAC region. I don't have all the uh, answers, but I do have a lot of viewpoints and opinions, which is probably no surprise to most people. It may turn out that I am totally unrealistic in my wishes, but it may not. I have specifically left plenty of time because I do really hope that people will have viewpoints that they wish to share. The new user interface, which we're going to be seeing tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, for Alma looks a lot cleaner and simpler for those who've attended some of the WebExes. My understanding is that redevelopment of the metadata editor is next. Catalogers have been stuck with a mark input template since Alma's launch. Not something I would have expected in an LSP. Not very next generation in my book, I'm afraid. I can still remember some of the very first PowerPoint screens I saw for metadata input, where it was based on the FRBR entities. And I thought, yes, somebody's going to be looking at the future a new system w which was looking forward. Needless to say, I was bitterly disappointed. Now there is another opportunity to look to the future. With this in mind, okay, let's start with the cataloging code. RDA, as all catalogers would know, has replaced AACR2 as the current set of instructions. Also, as with AACR2, the standard changes as, as amendments are made. And now they're on about a quarterly cycle. RDA is a package of data elements, guidelines and instructions for creating library and cultural, cultural heritage resource metadata that are well formed according to international models for user-focused linked data applications. RDA uses the IFLA uh, functional requirements suite of conceptual models as its foundation, so you have chapters on works, expressions, manifestations and items, also known as the WEMI stack. 
As the functional requirement models developed over, th over time, inconsistencies came in, which made it difficult for developers to, to reconcile those. So the FRBR review group has worked on consolidating the three models into what is now known as the IFLA LRM, or library reference model. They love acronyms. Ac acronyms. RSC, or the RDA Steering Committee, decided last year to implement the LRM. This means that the new instructions and guidelines for creating library metadata will follow this model. Okay, so surely this is just for cataloger, a cataloger thing. However, the LRM is an extension of the CDOC CRM, or basically the museum's conceptual reference model. This means that other cultural heritage metadata that uses the museum conceptual reference model as its foundation will be much more interoperable with library metadata. It's starting to be very international. So if a code provided instructions and guidelines that could be used by more than one cultural heritage community, that would make the resultant metadata less siloed. Any newly developed discovery layers or other front ends would be able to display, link, provide navigation or other exploration opportunities in much more interesting and broader ways. And I'll come back to this a little later. As I mentioned, RSC is implementing the LRM in RDA. I've just actually returned from the um, RSC meeting where we are planning the 3R project, which is that first line. The instructions will still be siloed around the existing entities, but will introduce new ones from the LRM. RDA will also provide instructions and guidance on using the fourfold path. Unstructured description, things like notes. Structured description, things like access points. Identifiers, ISBNs, music numbers, thematic indexes, and an IRI, which I just heard for the first time, an international resource identifier, or let's say URI. Not all elements will have all these paths, of course, open to them. And there's new ones coming in as well. Now, just so uh, to remind people of what a WEMI stack looks like, considering everything I've said so far, does it sound as if it is possible to use Mark to encode this data? We can't create a full RDA record even now in MARC. The addition of subfield zero to carry some of the URIs isn't going to help too much. MARC is going to be even more constricting for the LRM compliant RDA. MARC is still record based, yet if the library community wants to move towards the semantic web, its data needs to be linked open data. And again, more on that later in the presentation. And even though all of these diagrams are very much seen as going down levels, they don't need to think of them, try to think of them as in three-dimensional models. And every time I try to think of a, um, a linked data uh, database or a, a graph database, I keep thinking of a a chemical molecular model that has things sort of branching off, off it. So that's the way I can try to conceptualise how these things work. Okay, now we also have Bibframe. No doubt everyone here has heard of Bibframe and knows what it is, but just in case. Bibframe started in 2012 when the Library of Congress looked at a new bibliographic initiative. They contracted Safira to work out a replacement for Mark 21. That is, what is meant, that is what it was meant to do. Now we all know that the Mark format is only meant to be an encoding format in that it is meant to allow the exchange of data that has been constructed according to the relevant cataloging rules. We all know it doesn't quite work that way in practice, well, at least the catalogers do and no doubt the front end people who've been trying to use that data. 
Mark itself contains data entry points that had no accompanying cataloging rules in AACR2. Since most catalogers think in Mark rather than either AACR2 or RDA, trying to pry a Mark input form out of their hands is going to be an uphill battle to the say the least and I acknowledge that. But this is what we need to do in a linked data environment. Is it? So what is BibFrame? Looking at the data model diagram and how it combines various entities, I was thinking that it was possibly another content, content standard, even though the BibFrame site says that it can be used for RDA data, plus there were no instructions on how to create the data. So when I was just talking to Gordon Dunside, the chair of RSC, he explained that I did actually have it wrong and that BibFrame is indeed an encoding format. And I'll show you why I started thinking it may be a content um, format. Okay, an encoding standard, but if it doesn't have all the entities, either the functional requirement family of conceptual models, let alone the LRM, there's been no talk of BibFrame even looking at the LRM, let alone implementing it, how can it encode the data being created according to the new instructions and guidelines? And then how can developers use this data for cleverer fund ends? So the BIP 2.0 data model. So let's have a look at it and the various entities. Work, and for BibFrame, this is the highest level of abs abstraction. And the work in the BibFrame context reflects the conceptual essence of the catalogued resource, authors, languages, and what it is about, the subjects. Then you have instances. A work may have one or more individual material embodiments, for example, a particular published form. An instance reflects information such as its publisher, place, and date of publication and format. But hang on a minute, you'll notice that there are now only three there, so where did the fourth one go? And of course you've got the item, an actual, an actual copy, physical or electronic, of an instance. And it, it reflects information such as location, physical or virtual, barcode, etc. And then you have the agents coming off that. And of course also the subjects up the top. Concepts that include topics, places, temporal expressions, events, works and etc. But then you have all of the, also this funny little thing up the top which is the orange bubble that way which is occurrences and the recording of which may be the content of a work. But then I started looking at hmm BibFrame doesn't make any distinction between the LRM work and expression. Our cataloging guidelines are going to say that we are going to create data elements for works and we are going to create data elements for expression. And they muddle it all together. Instance can equate to manifestation and of course item is item. And there is only one agent here, so I'm wondering whether that will be f further refined because you will have collective agents, persons, etc. Then we have events, which I not, um, noted before, which going from the definition and diagram appear to mean the actual act of recording either a broadcast or movie. Could be just the di diagram's a bit iffy. But shouldn't that belong at the instance level rather than the work level? Unless they're taking an event to mean something from the museum community because of, commu of course museums were are very, um, find event very, very important when something was created. Of course, on a tangent, the BibFrame data model reminds me very much of how Leganto treats the representation, which automatically attaches the print bibli to the print bibliographic record. So I'm going to be really looking forward to this afternoon's uh, panel to see what they have to say and how they perhaps looked and, and dealt with this. And I must admit, as soon as I saw Leganto, I thought, hang on a minute, I've seen this before. Therefore, I went and dug out this diagram. So we've got BibFrame 2.0. Now we've also got 
bib frame 1.0. And you'll notice this is a, a fair bit barer than the other diagram. So this is the earlier version. There is no item, for example, and this looks different enough that you have to wonder whether the data encoded using bib frame, bib frame 1.0 and 2.0 are actually compatible. As far as I'm aware, 2.0 data is not, is not backwardly compatible, but um, that's just as far as I'm aware and I haven't dug down into the, the, the trenches of bib frame. So where are two, so there are two separate data, data models, but what is the underlying conceptual model? If there is one, if there isn't, why not? And then of course, as I had on the first slide, we've got already got forks. So we have an encoding standard that is meant to carry an exchange library data, however, which Bib frame version are you going to are you meant to use? And you will notice that the um, news announcement never said anything about which particular version of bib frame. It has already forked on this one three, and I think it may have actually forked already four if you consider bib frame 1.0 and bib frame 2.0 as separate forks. So which encoding standard will Alma use? How will Alma ingest different flavors of bib frame? Will libraries need to transform data before they load? Is bib frame still working on the idea of a record? Don't know. Then there is an even more fundamental question. If Mark can't encode RDA and bib frame can't, since it is lossy, you'll see because work expression are all in together, and you will see when you actually look at the table of conversion from Mark to bib frame that they're saying, well, we're not going to worry about converting this and we're not going to worry about that and ignore this and ignore that. So, mm -hmm. uh, and our RDA is being adapted and translated into eight languages already and growing. And it provides the instructions and guidance for library metadata that is conceptually in the same in the same stable as other cultural heritage data, why are our library service platforms still siloing library metadata? There is a very simple way of encoding RDA data. It's RDF, just Resource Description Framework. Now, before I go into that, I've mentioned linked data. So let's take a look uh, a look at linked data. Exactly what is it? And this is one of the best descriptions I've been able to find. So linked data is for machines, not for humans. However, remember that what libraries would want to, to, to be linked is, or would, the linked data they want is linked open data. You can get linked data that can be closed. So this provides links just within the domain but we want our data to go out there into the wilds of the web. Think of a Google Graph. It pulls in data from all sorts of different sources. What if library data was structured in such a way that it too could be pulled into those graphs? However, however this will not be possible if it isn't, lo if it isn't open data. Okay, RDF. I will not be talking about RDF in detail, and I'm happy for those who have more knowledge than uh, I to correct me, but RDF is for machines and is not for catalogers, as I've mentioned. It is for encoding and carrying data in triples of subject, predicate, object. This encoding is not library specific, so it can be used by other applications not even related to libraries. So think what other people can do with our data if it's encoded the same way that they understand. These are granular standalone statements. They can be sent out into the wilds of the semantic web so we can finally break our data out of, and all of the work the catalogers have done out of the silos that they've been held in for too long. If library data is encoded in triples, then the concept of a record no longer exists. You can think of data sets instead, and I've heard data sets, I've heard packages, so think of things gathered together. 
It is possible to use an IRI to pull all the various triples describing a resource together to display to the user. We also start moving away from relational databases to the graph databases instead. Acknowledging the elephant of Mark in the room. As far as I know, Mark can't be transformed into RDF without going through some other process, possibly Mark XML to, and then into RDF. I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure. But if RDF can encode data using linked data technologies, why are we trying to look for another encoding schema? Wouldn't it be better to use this and work on presenting an input screen that presents the RDA entities and a data input template? So this is one possible way of looking at RD, uh, of RDA data. It's just a search for Graham Bay sorted according to the WEMI stack. Upside down, I might add. It, it also has some uh, agents such as persons in there. I can clearly see that I have two manifestations for the waterhole with different spellings, one Australian, of course, and one American, who don't seem to think the waterhole is one word. However, I only have one work. Now, if we were you the, one of the manifestation records in RIMP, which is where this screenshot's being taken from, the template concentrates on data entry, not encoding. You will not see one subfield, you will not see any mark, you will see nothing. You're only concentrating on the data that you actually have to enter. In this example also, you actually have the RDA instructions that guide the cataloger to what is required if you're not quite sure. And then what elements can be um, selected for an authorised access point. So here's your structured, structured data. This is just one way of doing it. But this is what we currently have. A mixture of various entity levels plus, the, of course, the encoding. And I know personally what I'd prefer because it didn't take me a hell of a lot of time to work out how to, ca how to catalog in RIMF. This is um, a blank input, so you start off with anything. It's exactly the same as you can do it uh, in a mark input form. You can do it according to particular formats if you wish, having particular fields in there, and you just start adding your data and you go down. Okay, so I've also talked about, of course, um, visualizations, and, we, and it's all very well and good creating all of these triples, but what the hell are you gonna do with them? I contend that with the redevelopment of the metadata editor, not only could we finally start moving away from the mark encoding screen, ALMA will also allow the full implementation of RDA. So finally we can create RDA data, but so what? It must also be remembered that the full implementation doesn't only mean the entering of literal values in the new template, it also means moving the data we or the machine creates into a linked open data environment. As just some of the data may indeed have been human readable, have you human readable, readable labels, but actually be the URIs underneath. These could be taken from various authoritative files, including the RDA registry, and a lot of those are, um, URIs are already there. Well, again, so what? Isn't this all secret catalogers' business? I love this. Effectively, what we have at the moment in our discovery systems is this. Yes, the machine can search your input string faster, but it is still searching the basic card catalog types of data. Main entry, title proper, subject, are we really providing data that will, be help, will help fulfill the LRM user tasks of explore, find, identify, select, and obtain? Are we really providing the best way we, of presenting our data to our users? You have to wonder. Aren't we, but aren't we actually effectively providing our users a drawer full of catalog cards? Sure, we may be able to facet the initial returned result, 
providing the data is, is correct, of course, and most of this comes from the mark fixed field, so we all know how good that data is, especially the, especially the poor systems librarians and those who do Prima. Why can't we create data that is granular enough and coding using linked open data standards so that the front end developers for our library data can start presenting the data returned in different ways that will support the user tasks. Instead of just a plain list, why can't we have something like this, where the relationships are highlighted, where you know whether the name is an artist or an author, where we could provide data to the wider world, where library data could be pulled into a Google graph or another graph, or we could link to museum data, or we could link to the archives data. This becomes then a possibility. It, it, it is live on the, on the website. You can go, combine that data from other cultural heritage institutions so you can have those bubbles coming up and showing different things. It's just one possibility. But if we have the data in a granular enough way, then we can let our imaginations fly. Okay, so after all of that, if the library stays where it is, it will recede further into a backwater and we will not be able to provide the best services we can to our users. Why can't we ask our library vendors to work with us to create a truly next generation library system, but do so by helping libraries implement the international standard in creating library data or library metadata? RDA, encoding using pre-existing technology, RDF. As I said, so imaginative developers can start creating more innovative front ends for our users. Can we in the APAC region talk about this and the path that we want to go down? Do we want to go down a different pathway? Or do we want to go down the proposed bib frame pathway as announced on the 9th of May? And this is where we have a discussion. You can feel free to violently disagree with me. And I've come in under time. <laughs> yes, Megan. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a fantastic summary of a very complex issue and one that I agree we need to um, take to our experts who are the pathways that are open to us. Um, it's certainly an issue that I'd like to see taken up by the Elm Product Working Group and the um, uh, and Data Special Interest Group. Um, if we decided to go down that pathway, how would you? suggest we start. What, the other pathway? No, no, um, looking at introducing um, RDA, RDF into RDF. RDF may be a bit more complex because I, I do know that uh, the data in ALMA is encoded in a uh, ALMA specific proprietary format. It's not in raw mark. What it is, don't know. Don't Nobody's going to tell me, no, I don't think anybody's going to tell us either. And without the RDF, it does become a bit harder. What we can start doing and what I will start doing is putting in those subfield zeros and those URIs to the best of my ability. I will use those um, files that are out there, like VF, like the RDA registry. Uh, I will start trying to think of how we can put those relationships in. Yes, uh, into some of our, those names. Yes, at the moment they're just a text string because I don't think from memory Mark doesn't allow a subfield zero for the, the relationship designator. But if you use the relationship designator that is in RDA and in the RDA registry, that does have a URI behind it. So if, that's, if that literal string is equal, then at some stage you will be able to go in and do a global find and replace. 
Of course, I'm very, very conscious that we can't do this by, um, by hand. We have to find automated tools to do it. I think we can do a certain amount by uh, find replaces. If there's some uh, somebody very clever out there who knows of a bit of software or can write a little bit of software that can say, well, if you find this string, then go and uh, interrogate the, either the Library of Congress name file authority or the VF authority and pull back a, a, a URI, fantastic, because then we can start adding more and more. We have to build it up a step at a time. With the RDA uh, restructure, and I don't really want to go into that a lot, is there is going to be the thing that I mentioned as the unstructured description. And a lot of the data that is currently in the MARC record can then form an unstructured description. Yes, it is machine re um, uh, findable only by keyword, but at least you can find it. Oh, come on, surely somebody's got an opinion beside me. <laughs> This is probably more a uh, comment than a question, but feel free to talk to if you want to. You've spoken about Alma and the need for Alma to support Bibframe. But what happens when Alma publishes that data and what about that discovery layer side of things? Because at the moment, the data we have in Alma is very different to the way it displays once it hits cream room. Yes, that's true. But my but if Alma is able to output uh, in RDF, let's say, and the, the, the little program I showed you, RIMF, is able to output that data in either RDF triples or in MARC. Let's say Alma is able to output in MARC if it wants to for, for Primo or in some other proprietary format uh, for the current Primo. But if we've got some real, again, clever people who write a real linked data interface that Alma can then output into that linked data interface and find other ways of displaying that data and linking that data, then there is, there's other things that you can do. Uh, the Library of Congress have put some of their data out, uh, made, that, made it available as linked open data. Uh, I know the British Library have, the National Library of France has. So what I don't know at this stage is whether they're running their own triple stores that they just make, an op make open to the uh, World Wide Web or they just push it out somewhere else. Um, if they push it out, there's no reason I don't see why Alma can't push it out. If they run their own triple store, well, we vendors currently re run relational database stores. So we can perhaps run a triple, we can ask them to run a triple store if we're using their product to create our library metadata. It's, it is a bit of a moving feast, it, but most people at the moment are more concerned about the marked data that we've got. However, as I've heard so many times said, the future is much longer than the past. And I've always been convinced that there will be some clever person who will come and work out how we can actually do that, trans, transform most of the marked data. Come on, we've still got mark, we're sorry, we've still got AACR1 data in our, in our databases. It'll, but I also think that we have to become much, much more collaborative in doing this work. No, each library doesn't have to do it themselves. Whether we come together as a community and parcel out, well, you do this bit and you do that bit, or we actually work more as centrally, that community zone perhaps can really become that central spot. I never thought I'd actually ever say this when the change happened, but I, and this is showing my age a little bit, but way back in the dim dark, uh, dark ages of ABN, we could actually interrogate that central database and people added to it. So we've lost that with a lot of the batch uploads, but why that was something good that was in the past, so why can't we look at doing something similar to that? Most catalogues would search for it anyway, so you'd build, bring down, a, if you found the work record, you'd bring it down, you could, could just add a, um, a different expression if it was in a different language or just add your holdings to a manifestation if it already existed. And remember all of that, would, the brief process I didn't show you, you start at the manifestation, which is the thing that you have in your hand, and then the, the, the system takes data the, and puts it into the work, and then it takes data from there and puts it into the expression. You do not have to create all of those, uh, let's call them levels, but various entities from scratch. And once they're there, you just use and reuse and reuse. Sorry, I went off on a tangent on that one. 
Yes, I was, come on, John, I know. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> so, Ed, um, with, what should, would be your preference for name authorities, BIAF or some other standard? And would that clash with other, if we're on a community zone, for example, do we all use the same standard? Well, it shouldn't do because you're going to say what that um, URI is and you will acknowledge where it came from. So Library of Congress Name Authority should be NVF. They should be, it should be able to say, yes, this is actually the name, as with all the other national databases. But it's the way that you would structure the data. So with lo locally created authorities, what happens there? So, you know, I'm thinking of people, species and et cetera, et cetera. Well, it would depend on how you, how you um, structure that data. It could just be a structured access point, which means that you would say that there's um, that triple, the, 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 the subject, object, no, subject, pretty good object, or the other way around anyway. You, you create that triple and you would have underneath where that data came from if you're using a URI. Otherwise, you can use the URI of, um, you know, creator or writer or whatever. And it can just be a literal at the end. It doesn't, just a text string, it doesn't need to necessarily be another URI. Ultimately, they have to go out to text strings anyway. Sorry, one more, I promise. <laughs> My interest is in retrospectively converting data more mm -hmm. than anything. And as you said, there has to be someone clever out there that's probably doing. But what? How do you think that will happen? I don't know at this stage, to be honest. If if we had the ability to actually have a proper uh, linked data environment, then I think we need to put our heads together and see if the, what way that we could do this without actually all doing it by ourselves and individually. We've cooperated over a long time. I think we can cooperate in this and find a way to do it. But that's just the end process. We need the front, the front bit at the first, uh, to begin with. And this is, if we are using ALMA, at the moment all we have in ALMA is either a Dublin Core um, input form or a mark input form. The first thing I think that needs to happen is that we actually need to get away from even looking at coding. If, they, if Ex Libris uh, and most of the library community wish to encode in mark underneath, fine. But at least get the people who are entering the data thinking about it as data. Talking about a title which could have this particular relationship to something else, rather than now, is this a two, four, five sub? You know, in, uh, yes. To, uh, I was going to say indicator one, something else, subfield A, and then you've got parts, numbers, and goodness only knows what else. Or is it going to be a work that has a relationship to an author who then has another relationship to another particular work and we start building up a network and a graph of linkages that we can push out there and get our, da get our data out of those silos? If we only have bib frame, if that's the only option that we are presented with, then we are being pushed down a path that is not going to be 100% compatible with that international standard and it is really, really becoming an international standard. RDA is not just being translated into those languages. They are, those other communities, the Italians, the Germans, etc., having a real impact on the way that code is written. So what is the English-speaking countries going to do? Go down a one pathway that then cuts our data out from any other. Uh, international community. I would prefer not to do that myself. Sorry. Um, I guess my follow-on to that was following up to <coughs> myself asking about that fleshing out of the, the record, say, from a two-dimensional object or three-dimensional object. You basically need to do exam match records and potentially the source to sort of flesh out that's a bit of <coughs> And the follow-on comment to that is basically, if you throw out that a lot of these records are coming through from vendors as, as marketing and the supply. Sorry. <laughs> Is that better? 
Um, so just going back a step, I guess, uh, my follow-on to Tony's comment your own about the fleshing out the, the records, I guess turning a two-dimensional object to a three-dimensional object requires some to re-examine <coughs> that record to a certain extent. So I guess that's pretty... My, my concern is obviously how to go through and do that retro cataloging part. And the second part is maybe tackling it from the opposite end uh, and maybe talk to vendors perhaps about the records they supply, because I guess the mark is the bare minimum record they can supply. So maybe you can look at supplying the RDF and then dropping it down to mark if they had to. It, it would be possible, yes. You can um, convert if you wanted to. Yes, we would need to work with our vendors who supply our marked data. I'm not saying that at, at all. It, we need to work with a number of vendors. But there's no point in getting, let's say, someone like either YBP or, since we're in the ProQuest stable, somebody like Coots or the eBook um, central platform giving us RDF triples if we can't even put them into, into Alma. So it needs to be a two-pronged, definitely two, three, four-pronged attack possibly in convincing people to do that. And, and the libraries may at one some stage, until the, the vendor suppliers come on board, um, need to do some transformations. But if that community zone does its work, then if one person does it, others can leverage off it, then somebody else does something else and the other, and then the per everybody else leverages, leverages off that. It becomes a community building this up. Yes, we have the retrospective stuff, but we have retrospective stuff in our catalogues. Now, whose catalogue is whose catalog's clean? I can't say mine is. I've heard of an uh, organisation here in Victoria who's looking at their data. Some of that data is still come from a, retros a retrospective shelf list conversion done by a company I'm not going to mention because that may uh, <laughs> identify the organisation. And it's never, ever, ever been upgraded. So they photographed it and retyped it, but that's still sitting in the database. So we, we've got a lot of, let's say, bad data. It, we're not gonna convert it in five years. We may not even convert it in 10. But the vast majority, I'm not saying all of them, but the vast majority of uh, works can start using this, the, the linked data, start being encoded in RDF, going forward that this is the stuff that is mostly used. Yes, we'll have a very, very long tail, and we can work on that long tail. The same way as people have been able to get money to do projects in cataloging special collections or digitising special collections or doing something with a set, a discrete set. There isn't any reason why we can't start then looking at getting money I think there's a question I think it's, uh, to, 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 to do some of that conversion. And, and the more we become familiar with that environment, I think the more we will have people who will say, ah, oh, but I wonder if we did this and this and this, could we get an automated process? I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, some of this may not end up being done, um, having to be done manually. But I also remember talking to somebody, and I can't even, I can't remember who exactly it was, and then I, re uh, about this retro conversion of at least doing some of it and then putting it out there. And then I remember the National Library of, uh, of Australia's newspaper project. They digitised it, they put it out there, and people pounced. They wanted to do the work. Now, Think of some of the retired catalogues who still want to keep their hands in there, or other people who can understand data. If we put it out there and say, help us out as well, it could very easily be that by that community work, we could end up doing a lot more that, than any one of our own individual organisations can do. Hi. I was just wanting to, uh, I think, make a comment on the use of the conceptual models by Ed Sliverance. So where you get a product like Rosetta, which ties into both um, a museum and cultural heritage area, they're using um, the conceptual model as version two of premise, which is almost like that three-level big frame. In fact, the most, the version three of the prep for preservation of objects requires that you can nest intellectual entities inside of other intellectual entities. What, that one referred to as like the complex object model and digital. But 
it's not supported if you do away or conflate work and expression together into a big frame model or into a non art, you know, which there are basically four levels of that description in an art. And so um, I think that that becomes an issue. It, um, so I'm very interested to hear what you were saying because that they don't, ongoing, uh, the future is longer than the past. So why are we kind of stuck? Uh, in using a model which um, isn't implemented in our description of data. Yes, and yes, we can put all sorts of models out there, but we've gone to the effort, let's say our, the International Federation of Library Associations have gone to the effort of getting us a conceptual model that we can build things around, a theoretically conceptual model that we can all say, Yes, the, this concept means that, and this concept means that, so now I'm going to be treating these, con all of us are going to be treating these concepts the same. I know that's quite sometimes Pollyanna stuff, but th that's the theory, let's say. So if we build on that, and we build on something that the museum people have done also over a long time, and premise could easily be we also have a lot to do in, with the CDOC CRM. I, I know of premise, but I haven't looked at it in detail then yes, we can all tie those those things in together. But if we've, if the guidance is going that way and the encoding's going sort of that way, it just doesn't seem to match very well. And I think we are out of time, so thank you. Yeah. Keep thinking. <laughs>